Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on leaving Sir Project Math Strand 5 and today we're going to be looking at linear functions. We're going to see how we identify them, how we can write their equations and how we can sketch them when given the function itself. Before we do any examples, we first just need to establish what exactly is meant by a linear function and how we can tell if a function is linear or non-linear. So I've got a few examples of linear functions on the left, and then I picked out just a couple of non-linear functions to contrast on the right. If we look at the pictures first on the left, we see that both of the graphs are straight line graphs and linear functions will always have straight line graphs associated with them, whereas non-linear functions won't. So this one here is a log function. This one at the bottom is a quadratic function. And there's lots of other types of functions. There's cubic functions, there's trigonometric functions, exponential functions, and we'll have a look at them in some of the later videos. This last one here on the very right might be throwing you off because it looks like a straight line. And you might be asking yourself, well, why isn't it linear then? But if you think back to the definition of a function itself, a function will assign a unique output to any given input, whereas here we've got an infinite number of outputs associated with the input x equals 3. That line is x equals 3, but x equals 3 is not a function of x. Have a look back at the first functions video if you're still a little bit confused about that. Let's have a look now at the functions which are written in equation form. Linear functions will always be in the form f of x is equal to ax plus b, where a and b are real numbers. Basically, what you have is your input variable being multiplied by a real number, and then you're adding or subtracting a real constant at the end. a and b could also be equal to zero, which would mean your linear function could be in the form f of x is equal to ax, or f of x is equal to b. In that case, your function wouldn't depend on x at all, as it's just equal to the same constant value the whole time. You could also use the different function notations to describe your functions. So here you can see the f maps x to notation being used, and here we have the y equals to notation. Similarly, your function doesn't have to be called f, or your input variable doesn't have to be x. And you see examples of this at the end. We've got h here being the name of our function and q in this case. And in the same one, we see that a is our input variable. And in the last example, t is our input variable. It all means the same thing though. They're all linear functions. On the right hand side, then you can see some examples of non-linear function equations. So maybe pause this video for a few seconds and just look through them yourself and reassure yourself that they're different from the linear functions on the left. In order to analyze these linear functions in a bit more detail, I'm going to borrow this formula from the coordinate geometry section of the course. And this is the formula for the equation of the line y equals mx plus c. So maybe you've noticed that this looks very similar to what I had on the previous slide, which was f of x is equal to ax plus b. And I said that this was the general formula for a linear function. So basically, a is just the same as m, b is equivalent to c. So what do each of those letters mean? What is the m or the a? Well, that is the slope of the line. And the slope is just equal to the rise over the run. And if you've done coordinate geometry, then you will be familiar with this concept. The C or the B is just equal to the Y intercept. And the Y intercept of a line is just the Y coordinate of where the line crosses the Y axis. And we're going to see some examples of how we use this formula now. 